Hi, my name is Brett from Bite Size Business School, and we're going to create an application that uses a table view, and we're going to make the table view edible. I mean, you can rearrange rows, you can delete rows. So the first thing I want to do is create a new Xcode project, and this is going to be a single view application, one of the most common, and I'm just going to call this table view. And let's see, we don't want to use core data for this. We're going to create for the iPhone. We have our language as Swift. I have the organization BBS for Bite Size Business School. And then I've just got my name. So I'll click Next and save this. Okay, so here's our app. And if I go into the storyboard, I'm going to have just the one scene here and let's see if I change my simulator I don't want an uh, iPhone 6 because it's so big I'll run this and we can see that we're gonna have just a very basic application here with a blank scene so this is our app and you can see there's not much going on so what I want to do is add a new scene which will contain our table view and we'll click out of this scene and go into our table view. You'll notice this table view is fairly big and that's fine. Um, we're gonna still make use of it and we're going to add a stack view onto this scene with a button and it will always resize to the correct size no matter what device we're on. In this app we're going to list out the different layers of the atmosphere. So we'll have like the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, so that we'll have data coming in. Now you can make this whatever you want inside of your table view. It's just going to be an array of string and you can change it. But we're going to look at it in a way that it can be any kind of data source coming from anywhere. So the first thing I want is to add our table view. And this is going to be brand new so I'm going to use a table view controller. And I'm using it because it's going to give us a few different things for free that we don't actually have to create for ourselves. So if I open up the document outline and expand our table view, well the first thing we have is the actual table view. And then that is tied to the table view controller. So this is going to give us a few different things. Like the, the view itself, we have a table view cell, this prototype here, and there's a content view on this which allows us to do particular things like images, a detailed description inside of the cell. But one thing I'm going to have to add is a table view controller because there's no class behind this table view. And if we go back over here, if I click this view controller icon, and then I go into the identity inspector, you can see here the class is view controller, which is this class, and that class is a UI view controller. We need one for our table view, otherwise there's no logic behind the table view and it's not really going to do anything. So I'll click New File. We want a Cocoa Touch class. I'm up here in the iOS section, and that's why I have all these different templates. I'll click Next, and I'll call it Table View Controller. Now for the subclass, I want a Table View Controller there as well, which is going to be this one. Notice I'm still in Swift, and I'll do Next and Save. So this Table View Controller will also give us a few things that we need. You can see here this mark has table view data source. And if I go up here to the top, that's this mark right here. So they demarcate the different area for the table view. We have number of rows and section, number, actually number of sections in the table view, then there's a the number of rows. The difference is that you can have multiple sections in a table and each section can have rows. So we want this to return 1 because we're only going to have 1. If it's 0, nothing's going to happen. So always make sure you have at least one section. Number of rows will be determined by our array, which we don't have yet. We also need this method here, which is cell for row at index path. This is actually going to return the content. So the first thing I want to do is create an array. And let's see, we're going to do a let because this is not going to be modified for now and we'll do atmosphere 
layers equals and in here I can go ahead and start listing off these layers and I'm just going to go from the bottom to the top so if we start at the ground level we have the troposphere and then we have the stratosphere then we have the mesosphere and I'll do one more we'll list the thermosphere hopefully all these are spelled correctly now we have data for our table view so let's look at what we have so we have our main view and we want a button so that we can then transition over to our table view so I'll just add this button here let's see show atmosphere actually let's, let's do show atmospheric layers that's a little better and I want this to, to go all the way across because I'm not going to have columns on this scene so this way the user has more surface area to tap and there's not there's less chance of them making a mistake and hitting out here on the edge so to get that look I'm gonna go into the little measure icon here and on the arrange I'm gonna do fill horizontally so this fills goes all the way to the edges and if we run this let's see what we have at this point so we're in an iPhone 5 you can see our button is well over here we can click it nothing's happening we don't have any way to transition over to our table view so we're gonna fix that now first thing we want to do is fix the way this button looks so it's not resizing to the device if I go down here to the bottom there's a stack icon I'm gonna click that so now we're in a stack where there's only one item at this point I want this item to sit uh, maybe this far from the top and then to continue stretching across so I'm gonna click on this icon which is the pin icon what we want to do here is go ahead and click on all four of these constraints the top one's gonna be an 80 the bottom one um, I'm just gonna leave actually so it maybe can adjust now these sides we want to go all the way to the edge now, I want the height to be constrained to 30 because uh, sometimes the stack view will increase things quite a bit in regards to height so now I'll add these constraints and update frames and you can see here it's actually letting some margin because we had constraint to margin so let me go back in here remove this try that one more time so this way it will go all the way to the edge and I want my 80 to stick it keeps going to 81 let's try it now okay so now you can see we go all the way to the edge I need to move this over like that and update frames hopefully everything updates looks like there are some issues so if I click on the document outline I can go into here and let's see what it's complaining about I'm gonna try and see if it will fix as many of these as possible so I think what happened here is I added that first constraint then I went back and I updated it and it caused it to kind of flip out so I think what we have to do at this point is go back and work on these constraints again let me make sure I've got my stack view selected and not my button so here's what I want the stack view and I'm gonna see what constraints do they have now we have the height of 30 which is good um, we can remove all of that and basically start over the height of 30 on our button is there so that is fine now let's work on the stack view and I'm gonna fix any of these before I redo this so alright and now the stack view so keep the 80 remove the constraints to the margin set that to zero and now I think we're in business and let's see looks good go ahead nothing to update on the frames 
minor issues. So let's see what are they telling us. Okay, so I think it's not going to actually do anything. You can see it's not having an effect. And I'm going to leave that as is. We'll look at it in a minute at runtime. And now what I want to do is go ahead and control drag over here and create a segue. I want to do a show because actually I want to embed a controller, a navigation controller into the first view. Then we'll create our segue because that'll give us the navigation bar at the top. So if I go to editor, embed in navigation controller. It now is the first view. You can see here it's got the icon for the initial view. Uh, we don't get any kind of inspection on it, but that arrow is the initial view. And let's see, they put us down here. I'm actually going to bring this back and put it where I can see it, right next to this one. Let's see what happened to our other one. Down here. So I'll put it here as well because actually the, we can now really see the flow just going across like this and that's kind of intuitive. Okay, so we need to zoom in 100% so we can start working with our controls again. And I'll control drag from the button to the table view and do a show. Now you can see we have our navigations at the top and over here as well. So if we go back into our app, it'll look a little different. So there's our button, here's our navigation at the top. If I click show, we go to our table. Let's go ahead and load our table with data at this point. So I'm gonna drag our table view controller up here. We have our array and down here, we can go ahead and start doing some assignments. So let's see, we have atmospheric layers and let's pull an item out of here this is going to pull the current atmosphere. I need to do a cell. Let's see, we want a label, I think, or is it text label? Text equals. And they're probably going to want to do some kind of unwrapping here on that label. Now, the last thing we need to do, which we don't have, is we need to add this reuse identifier again. So I'm going to run this and show what happens if you don't do that. If I click on our button, we go over here and nothing's displaying. So actually, we need to do this because this, this method is not going to trigger if there aren't any rows. So the way the flow goes, these are your main three methods for a table view that you need to have. Number of rows in the section one. Actually, it's number of sections in table view, which is one, number of rows in the one section. So here's where we need our array count. All right, so we have a count. Now that we have that, we can begin at assigning things to a cell. So now if we run this, we should see what impact not uh, applying the reuse identifier again has. So I'm going to click show table view and nothing's happening. And if I put breakpoints in here, we're going to make sure we're triggering. So right now there's actually a disconnect. We need to view controller and go into our attributes inspector. It's actually identity inspector. Tie the class to this. And let's see the view controller. We still have our class. So now the scene and the view controller are tied together. And if I run this, there's not going to be any effect. So we're going to kind of walk through this one at a time to see what's going on. And okay, so here's our breakpoint. And if we go ahead and run to the next one, actually just run to the next breakpoint, you can see we're going in that order of sections, rows and section. Keep going. So it's going to keep hitting this until it finishes out with the count of the array. Then it's going to go into here, start pulling these, because these actually only uh, pull for the number of rows that it can display in a scene at one particular time. So if you have 10 items in your array, it may be that only five pull at a time. So I'm going to let this run through. Now we get our crash, this SIG ABRT. And if I scroll up, 
let's see what is the error. The error is at the top of all the output. So terminating due to uncaught exception, unable to DQSO with identifier, reuse identifier. Must register a nib or a class for identifier or connect a prototype cell to a storyboard. So now we've officially crashed, but our table view class is wired up and connected. So here's where this piece comes in. If I copy this, go back into the storyboard, we need to click on our prototype cell. And let's see, I'm gonna remove some of this. So what we need to do now is in the storyboard for this scene, we need to um, add this reuse identifier. So it needs to be in our code base and it needs to be up here inside of Interface Builder. And that is going to actually be the attributes inspector. And if we click on our table view cell, we get right here, reuse identifier, paste that in. Now if we run, should be a difference. We shouldn't crash at this point. And I can remove these breakpoints. Delete. Well, actually, we're going to see how this works. It's going to go through and hit these before it goes down and hits our self row at index path. So you can see here what's happening. For each row, it's going to do this. Now it's going through. Let's see what happened here. Unable to DQ identifier. So I think what's going on is it's just caching. And I'm going to let it run again. I'm going to remove some of these breakpoints. Probably I should have just done a clean on this. Delete, delete, and run. So now we're in here. So you can see we didn't make any code changes. It was just a caching issue that it had. Now we're going to pull an item out of our array. If we look at this array, print object, we'll see all of our items here. So we're zero index based. You see it says four elements, our last index being three. And if we look at this one, this is the first item. And if I go down here and print it, we'll see troposphere. Actually, it's pulling from the back. So what is the value here then? So I'll print object, zero. So the zero one, right, okay, so it's getting this one here. And yeah, that's the first one. So I'm going to remove this breakpoint and let this run out. And there they are. So now we've got our table view wired up, ready to go. And next what we're going to do is add in the ability to edit this. So delete rows and rearrange rows.